Welcome to another video, a walk with Phil and I'm here in West Bromwich and what I thought I'd do today is to go and visit all the old sites of the cinemas that used to be around West Bromwich. Uh, I'm going to mainly concentrate on the ones that were in West Bromwich, there's a couple of them that would you would class as out of West Bromwich. There was the Clifton at Stone Cross and uh, there's one at the Hilltop, the Hilltop Cinema. Uh, but so, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try and find, locate the sites of the old cinemas that used to be here in West Bromwich. And the problem we're going to have is it's, can, it's getting, becoming increasingly more difficult to actually locate the sites of some of these old cinemas now. But uh, anyway, we'll have a look and see what we can find. This cinema here was called The Palace and it was known as The Queen's eventually. But it, it was just around about here, just about here where the cinema would have been. It's very difficult to name the exact location now, um, but it was probably one of the first cinemas that was built in the black country. And the building, the building originally was not a, uh, a purpose-built cinema. It actually was a, originally a printing works. It was converted to a cinema on the 21st of January, 1909. The first film was called Rifle Bill. And I think the name's Queen's was actually adopted in 1910, uh, just to avoid the confusion of the uh, Electric Picture Palace, which was in the High Street at the time. Um, it was rebuilt in around about 1920, and um, it, had a, it was built for around about 1,200 people, apparently. But by 1969, its tendencies had really dropped off. And it was actually had a nickname called the Book and Blanket, would you believe? Uh, the last film was Witchfinder General with Vincent Price on the 5th of April 1969. It did have a small run of Indian films until July of 69, but by then, August of 69, it was demolished. Yeah, so this is, is yet another particular site where the location of the cinema is going to be very difficult to pinpoint. All we can give you is an approximation now. It's probably around about here that the cinema uh, was called, uh, was created in, was built I should say, in, on the 16th of May 1910 when it opened and it was called the Electric Palace and it's one of those very lesser known cinemas but considering its location uh, which was here on the high street as it was back then and uh, it also when it originally opened in 1910 it had a, a rear door access uh, it had the the main access i should say to this cinema was in paradise street behind it and it wasn't until the 27th of october 23rd 1913 that a new access was created um, here in the high street and the film on that day was called a message from mars apparently the the entrance to this cinema is quite ornate apparently with all its cornices and palisters it apparently looked like some kind of london opera house when it opened in 1913. Um, it was built for at least 1200 folks and uh, and when it first opened in 1910 main, the films mainly then was showing about the death of the king edward the seventh um, yeah, so it was. It, considering its position, its location, and this high, this was this is Duchess and Princess Parades now. But this high street was a very busy thoroughfare. Obviously, all the traffic used to pour up and down here. Thousands of people used to be milling around here in this particular part of the high street. But it never gained the dominance of uh, that it ought to amongst all the other town cinemas. Um, but uh, I, it was for 1,200 people. But with all the improvements to the 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 cinema from 23 from 1913, it did bring the attendance down to about 900. Uh, but sadly, it uh, it just the attendance really just diminished more uh, more and more. So they made the decision that on the 28th of September of 1957, this lesser known cinema. Uh, finally closed. In 1957 it was all over and the last film shown here was The Lonely Man, Jack Balance. During the, the bombing raids of November uh, 1940, um, the people who were attending the cinema 
the sirens went off, people came out of this cinema because there were bombs that hit this area. It didn't hit the cinema, but it was pretty close. And they would run across to an underground cellar uh, here on the corner of this area just here, which was the, the Burton's building. Uh, so yeah, they evacuated the cinema and went over to the Burton's building during that raid that night in November 1940. So, and, and actually, you know, there is not a single picture exists of this cinema. Uh, the Electric Palace, uh, which eventually did, which was the Electric Palace, which was renamed the Palace in 1913. But there you go, it was just over there, somewhere, but not far away from where I've described. It could very well have been the exact spot where I've just pointed out. Anyway, we'll go and find our next cinema. Our next cinema was just around here, and we're in Spon Lane, here in West Bromwich. And that's there stood the Imperial. It was built for 1,300 people, and that's an extraordinary uh, and a very impressive building it was. It, uh, it opened on 8th of April in 1912, and uh, it did get a rebuild in 1921, which mainly included a new facade, and it had white glazed terracotta and purple bricks, which really made it stand out rear, just there where I pointed out here on Spon Lane. Um, but it didn't, it had a bit of a chequered career, it wasn't, it, it wasn't as popular as, as it, it could have been I suppose, but uh, it did close eventually in September 1963, quite early really, but it did reopen again uh, a month later uh, in October for bingo, as a lot of these cinemas tended to be. Um, but then came uh, a new manager and he decided he wanted to be a cinema again so on the 7th of April 1969 which just was around about the time when the Queen cinema closed just up the road uh, the new owners spent £20,000 to return it back to a cinema and the first film they shown that day was Doctor Doolittle starring Rex Harrison and um, but sadly it closed again in nine, on the 27th of June 1975 and with the film called Breakout starring Charles Bronson which was the last ever film to be shown at the Imperial and the reasons for its closure of course was all this new ringway that they had constructed which uh, as you can see goes round to the right and uh, Spon Lane now uh, I'm not even on Spon Lane now if I just zoom in you can see there's a bush shelter down there that's where Spon Lane begins now all this in fact was Spon Lane at the time uh, but it's not anymore uh, the building stood for three years, uh, laying idle, deteriorating rapidly until it was demolished for these roads in uh, yeah, 1978. And that was the end of the Imperial Cinema. Right, the next cinema we have for you is just, well, I'm going to say just about here. But really, it, it's, probably, it's probably more towards me. No, but if we say it was roughly here, although again, it's probably, I'm probably going back a little bit too far. It's probably, if I walk backwards, uh, the frontage would follow me a little bit more. It could be around about here. Uh, but, um, but for the sake, for the purposes of giving you an approximate idea, um, it would have been, the Empire would have stood just around here. It was known as the Empire, the Plaza, and the Kings, but originally the Empire opened on June 1914 on this site with um, seating for 800 patrons and it cost £10,000 to build and um, uh, but they did a lot of but it wasn't a cinema, it was actually a theatre and it wasn't actually into cinema until the 26th of September 1927 when it was converted to one and reopened as the plaza. Um, I think the ABC came sniffing around in 1929 and they bought the, the actual cinema but they sold it by 1935. It was after World War II that, that the plaza then decided, made a decision and decided to turn it back into a theatre. And uh, But this didn't go well at all and attendances suffered it declined 
and by 1957 they had to close it as a theatre because it simply wasn't viable to continue as such. And so the theatre, the last theatre production was something called between, uh, it was something called Thanks for the Memory. So the new owner came along, his name was Miles Jervis, and he decided to, to reconvert it back to a cinema and opened it as the King's on the 11th of March 1957. And the film was called Between Heaven and Hell. And uh, it did reasonably well. Um, he did have another cinema, just up the row called St George's. Uh, he didn't do a lot with St George's. He really concentrated more of his efforts on this particular cinema, on this site, called The King's. But sadly, as you can see ahead of me now, we've got all this converted, convert, regeneration around here and all these roads. Um, and so the cinema had to go because it was right in the pathway of some of these roads and uh, Paradise Street itself has all been demolished and closed down so the cinema uh, was no more on the 28th of April 1973 with this final film called The Legend of Dick Turpin so sadly that was the end of the King's Cinema and who remembers the King's Cinema as it used to stand here with its blazing neon light the kings emblazoned in the in the night sky uh, it was a truly wonderful sight to see the kings lit up actually and it was a truly lovely cinema yeah. i'm just on the the actual road uh, that once was the paradise street that ran straight ahead of me and um, so what i'm going to try and do now is try and show you where st george's cinema used to be now here, just ahead of me, was the entrance or an exit of a, of a walkthrough arcade called the Arcadia. And it was just here, just there, where we would have the St George's Cinema. Now the St George's Cinema um, was, its frontage was on Paradise Street. It was probably the first cinema that was built after the First World War and it wasn't a purpose-built one. It probably was a Wesleyan Chapel and maybe it could have been a small school. But it had been, but it became a public hall in 1859 until 1875. The cinema was converted and it had about 700 seats for patrons and it opened on the 26th of July 1920. Um, but, the, but when Miles Jervis came along, his main concern was the King's Cinema, it was more or less opposite this one. And, and so he didn't lavish as much attention to it as he could have done. He usually used it, usually used it more as storage, really. Um, but it didn't really do, hadn't really had much success. And by uh, 18th of June 1955, it finally showed its last film, which was uh, a Swedish film actually, called The Unmarried Mothers. Uh, but that again wasn't the end for this one, because it did reopen again for Indian films on the 24th of September 1955, and they named it a new name, it wasn't the Sir George's, they changed the name to the Krishna Cinema, uh, but again that only lasted for 13 weeks before it was demolished in 1962. Now we come to one of the most unluckiest cinemas that we had here in West Bromwich. This was the, uh, the New Kings and it was a purpose-built triple screen cinema. And of course it, and it was not nothing like the Kings or the Imperial. This one had a very, very plain frontage. And it opened on the 28th of June 1975. It had Three screens, as I said, but the first two were opened on this date. King's One showed its first film called Shampoo. Uh, there was 320 seats in there. This King's Two had 280 seats. Showed the film called The Yaguza uh, for 280 patrons. King's Three, that was the biggest one with 442 seats. Uh, that opened on the 20th of July 1975 and it opened with The Godfather Two. Um, it was a very, very well patronised cinema, in fact. 
actually, I actually visited this um, particular cinema when the film Star Trek came out, and I had to queue right into the shopping area, shopping centre, Sandal Centre was called then, as they hadn't got a very large auditorium to queue inside. Uh, but as I said, it was well patronised, and where I'm standing now, where all this bus station, this all used to be, uh, this all used to be a car park and uh, it was quite a large car parking area actually and this served well for this King Cinema because many people would park here and visit the, visit the, visit the, the, visit the Kings um, but old cell development was near rearing its head and it was getting more and more difficult for people to get to this building because they started doing this car park uh, regenerating this area to create where I'm standing now, the new bus station. And instead of regenerating the area, it actually had an adverse effect on this this cinema, this well-liked cinema, and well-patronised cinema, and it just couldn't carry on anymore. It was all roadworks all around, there was all works around it, barriers, holes, workmen, all around the front of the building. They put up signs, saying stuff like we business is open as usual but to no avail it started losing customers quite quickly actually and suddenly without any warning it closed on the 8th of September of 2002 because of all these being all this building work that was dogging their efforts to stay afloat and the last films I believe they showed were Spy Kids and The Guru and as you can see, the, the name Nickelbridge is on the side. Uh, I think it did all become a nightclub for a time. And then its other uses have been, it was a Poundland. Let's show you what it used to be. Yeah, it used to be a Poundland. You can still see the blue shutter door there to show you it was a Poundland. And then it was, um, I know it's this place, CT Furniture, and I think that's all closed down as well. So, yes, yeah, sadly, that was the end of the King's Cinema. And the reason for the demise of the King's Cinema was this place, this bus station. Formerly known as Paradise Street. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was it, and of course, uh, it wasn't quite the end, because when this closed in 2002, a new cinema was opened, the Odeon, in around 2012, which I won't be covering. Which ensured that we still have a cinema presence here in West Bromwich. There is definitely a lesser known cinema, that I'm sure many of you probably are not aware of. It was called the Sandwell Cinema, here in Sandwell Road. Now it was, it was originally an old chapel and it was converted to a cinema and the actual chapel itself was dated from 1812 and it even had a graveyard. Okay, and uh, so a new frontage was built and on the 24th of August uh, 1922 uh, the Sandwell Cinema opened for business. Now on old maps these uh, houses were all fields uh, it doesn't denote it was a graveyard, but I don't think any of these old maps uh, really sh uh, generally show that. But it, there was a lot of fields, and I've looked along Sandwell Road, and Sandwell Road now is, is all changed massively now. We've got Brat Street here to the right. Ahead of me is Sandwell Road, um, but it, it, it tends pretty abruptly at the very end, where Mill Street joins it from the left, because we've got the expressway ahead of that. And But I've looked along a whole length of uh, Sunwell Road. I can't find anywhere where there was a kind of clearing fields, that kind of thing. So this is the only place that I can see where the Sunwell Cinema could have, could have been, or the old chapel as it once was. But sadly, it didn't do any good whatsoever, maybe because of its position. Because if you look down there, um, you can see the end of the road, the traffic lights, a Dartmouth Street would be head, and then it would the high street would be to the right and to the left, so it was a little bit out of the way to be fair. And so not many people were aware of this cinema. It did get advertised a lot in the local newspapers, but uh, it only lasted, I, what, I reckon it lasted around about three years. And uh, it seemed to have closed 
around 1925, this uh, cinema. And, uh, and the council used it for, for some time, for storage. And it was finally demolished in around 1953. Right, it was here in Carter's Green, uh, just off Shaftesbury Street here in West Bromwich, that a theatre was built on the 6th of August 1906. It was made out of corrugated metal. It had a corrugated roof. And when the patrons were inside, were often interrupted. Uh, watching the show due to the heavy rain that used to bang on the roof and apparently it even collapsed under a weight of snow once but it was made of corrugated metal because it was um, they didn't the owners decided well, we'll do something temporary now and if it's well patronized we'll do something we'll create something more permanent but anyhow it did flirt with cinema for a time when it changed its name to the Olympia in 1911 and during that time the owner set aside £21,000 uh, to build a more permanent building. It never came about sadly and in, uh, 19, uh, in the 1920s it caught fire one evening and sadly it was demolished in 1922. It wasn't much longer after that date that the Ford Motor Company built a site on this this area uh, selling cars and uh, yeah well, and that Ford car lot stayed on this site for quite some time and it was uh, Lidl who eventually bought the site after Ford left and this is what we've got this is what we have here today it's the Lidl supermarket here just off Carter's Green here in West Bromwich our final cinema uh, here in West Bromwich is uh, called the Tower. Uh, the Tower was uh, situated uh, just here on this car park and it was here till about the mid 1990s before it got demolished. Yeah, the Tower was, uh, was so called because of the clock tower that stands here since 1897. But the Tower was um, a class when it was built, it was called a super cinema. That's what it was classed as, and it had uh, it had enough seats for up to 2,000 patrons. It was opened on the 9th of December 1935, and it began with a Laurel and Hardy short, followed by the main feature film, which was the 39 Steps, a Hitchcock film, and it starred Madeline Carroll. And Madeline Carroll was obviously famous in these parts of West Bromwich because she was actually born in Herbert Street, in here in the town. Um, it also had within the building it had a mighty illuminated organ console which rose from the pits into view and it was played by a certain Leslie Taft who decided to leave uh, the um, who decided to leave the tower and move to the Regal in Darleston in 1938. Um, it was a it was a fine cinema. It looked like an Odeon, but in fact it wasn't an Odeon. The Odeon founder, Oscar Deutsch, he, they, it was rumoured that he was going to have some involvement in the construction of this, but he said he was not very happy with the actual location of this cinema, being far away from the centre of the high street, which as you can see is just up, is up there. Uh, and when many people were interviewed, when they came to the tower, they said they, quite, they came here because they fancied going somewhere posh. Yeah, it did look a very fine building was the tower. And, but sadly it didn't last as long again as it ought to have done really, maybe because it was to do with the location. Uh, in 1948 the film Brighton Rock was, um, was, film, was, uh, was showing here and it was attended by the film star himself, Richard Attenborough, who actually came here to uh, promote the film. Uh, it was in 1961 when it was now known as the ABC and uh, and actually after that the organ itself that was that mighty organ that was in there that was finally removed from the cinema and I believe it's at a place called Fenton Hall in Henley and Arden. The tower itself actually closed in uh, 28th of December 1968 but then it reopened a few months later on the 18th of January 1969 uh, for bingo 
as, uh, as, as a lot of the cinemas were, they became bingo halls. It sadly deteriorated um, and it just, the tiles and that were all breaking off and it just was falling apart. Uh, but sadly, it all came to an end when the building was demolished in around the 1990s. And it, I think on this, on this site after that was a drive-through pharmacy. It's had one or two, it's, that closed down, it's had one or two uses since then. We've had uh, a charity shop there, but now we've got something called Alton Tower Supermarket. Okay then folks, that's the end of our little tour of, of the cinemas that were, that were here in the town of West Bromwich. You can see how increasingly difficult it is now to, to find where the exact sites of, of these uh, wonderful old buildings used to stand that gave so much joy to generations past um, everywhere you look where the cinemas were wholesale regeneration has taken place and so it makes it very very difficult to to find out where they all are now i did say earlier that there are a couple of cinemas i've neglected to mention uh, to show you i should say the clifton stone cross and uh, the hilltop one uh, maybe i'll cover those again at a, at a later date uh, but in the meantime, um, we'll leave it at that and I uh, hope you liked the video and if you did, hit the like button and also hit subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and I'll see you on the next one.